Hi everyone. In a previous video, I showed you how you could create a stacked text effect using just Carbide Create. Today I was surprised to see Amy had posted a sign that her and her husband had created using my tutorial, and I think it came out great. But Amy did make one comment that stood out, that the sign had taken over five hours to carve, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to revisit this project and show some techniques that we can use to really speed up the carving time. If you haven't already seen the video I created on the stack text effect, it might be worth watching that first. Otherwise, keep watching and we'll see just how fast we can get this to cut. So let's begin by talking about the problem. Here I've recreated a basic stack text effect using the same techniques that I did in the previous video. The output here on the design tab looks great. So let's discuss why this would take so long to cut by hiding the simulation and looking at the tool paths. Here it may become immediately obvious why this would take so long. Each of those blue lines represents a pass taken by the 1 8 inch end mill that this was designed to use. The 1 8 inch end mill is a great choice for getting details on letters, but a horrible choice for clearing out large areas. Zooming in, you can see it will take dozens of passes to clear this area. And that's not even accounting for the fact that the 1 8 inch end mill can't cut the full depth of this in one pass. Depending on how deep we cut, it could take a dozen or more passes to get to the full depth. So we're going to take a couple steps here to reduce the amount of time this takes to carve. We're going to make sure our feeds and speeds are going at reasonable rates, so as they don't take excessively long to cut. We're going to minimize the depth that we cut this line to reduce the number of passes we have to take. But if you really want to improve the speed of the carving, I'm going to show you a simple technique to use two bits to clear this even faster. It will help us to have an objective standard to compare our changes against. I'm using this simple online visualizer tool, not so much because I trust that it's two days and 12 hour estimate is accurate, but because I want a reference point. While I don't for one moment believe that the sign would take two days to cut, I do believe that if we get that number to cut in half, that we can expect our actual carve times to be cut in half. I just want to be clear that I'm only using this as a relative comparison. With that in mind, our initial estimate is 2 days and 12 hours. When she posted the image, Amy even commented that next time they would probably not cut so deep. Depending on your specific project, you'd be surprised how little depth difference you need to create a really nice effect. So we're going to go ahead and make those changes in this design and see how that affects our time. I currently have this set up to cut to two depths. At its deepest, the recessed area is one quarter of an inch deep. The lettering for Smith is one eighth of an inch deep. And then the lettering for Jane is at the original surface level. Let's edit the toolpath for Smith. And let's reduce the depth to a little over an eighth. Likewise, let's edit the toolpath for Jane. And let's bring that down to about half of what it is now. And let's look at our simulation. So obviously none of the geometry has changed, just the depth. Now whether you're happy with this or whether you prefer the more pronounced cut is entirely up to you. I just want to show you the effect this has on the actual cutting time. So I'm going to go ahead and save out the G-code and run it through that simulation tool and see what kind of time we get. In the tool I'm using, this has dropped almost a day, 22 hours off of our cutting time. Again, I don't think that's an accurate estimate, but I do think we've reduced our cutting time by over a third. Let's hop back into Carbide Create and take a look at our feeds and speeds on that 8th inch end mill. Opening up the toolpath for Jane and editing our bit, we can see the notoriously conservative feeds and speeds for Carbide Create. I have another video on using GWizard feeds and speed calculator, so I'm not going to go over that again here, but let me skip to the result. Okay, so here I've set up GWizard with a 1 8 inch bit. I set it for pocketing by setting the cut width to half the diameter of the bit. And I've set my cut depth to the depth of that Jane text, or the profile around it, of around 1 16th of an inch. 
even keeping things at an RPM of 18,000, which is around 2 on the DeWalt, it's basically telling me to set my feed rate however quick I want. I've actually asked GWizzard not to go over 100, and it's telling me it would like to go over 100, except I've asked it not to. Not only that, but with this depth of cut, we can cut that top layer in one pass instead of three. Now I never like to max things out on my first cut of a project, and so on one-off projects it actually means I often probably waste some time, but we can get a lot closer than we are now. I'm going to disable the automatic feed and speed. I'm going to set my depth per pass at 065. It's a little higher than we're actually cutting. I just don't want Carbide Create to accidentally round the wrong way and make two passes instead of one. I'll leave the step over where it is. I'll set my feed rate to, let's do 50. And the plunge rate from G-Wizard is 50, so let's set that at half as well at 25. We're not going to be doing a lot of plunging anyways. It's going to mostly be a single plunge followed by a long pocketing operation. Now let's take a look at Smith. Setting the start depth is actually something I probably overlooked. Hopefully I addressed that in my previous video, but here I've completely omitted it. By the time I start cutting the lettering for Smith, I've already cut down to 0.62 inches, and that's where I can start my cut. I'm actually going to go ahead and have it start at 0.60, just so it starts slightly above where I've already cut to. Let's go ahead and look at our simulation. Everything still appears to be cutting the way we want. I'm going to go ahead and export the G-code, run it through the simulator, and see what kind of time I get. From our original project, we've cut our cut time from two and a half days down to six hours. Cutting the number of passes we made really sped things up. Between moving the bit faster and reducing the number of passes we had to take, we've really cut that time down. Remember, the whole thing is cut in two passes now, thanks to our depth and our feeds and speeds changes. For a lot of people, this is probably where you want to stop. Especially if this is a one-off project, put the stock in your machine, run it, clean your shop while it's running, and be done. But if you need to crank out a dozen of these, this still may not be good enough. So let's look at one final technique. The main limitation we have is how quickly we can push that bit through the wood. The final technique I'm going to show you is a simple way that you can use two bits. We'll use a larger quarter inch bit that can be pushed much faster to clear out the large areas, and then we'll use the finer detail eighth inch bit to get the details. This does mean doing a bit change in the middle of your project. That can actually eat up time. Depending on your project, the amount of time you save by using the larger bit to clear the area may be completely offset or worse by the amount of time it takes to switch the bit, re-zero, and start the next toolpath. So this may not be appropriate for every project, but since our estimate here isn't going to include that tool change time, we can at least see what it does to the actual pathing. Because Carbide Create doesn't stop rendering the toolpath, even if we disable it, just so we can see what we're doing, I'm actually going to go ahead and remove the Smith toolpath, and I'll recreate it later. Now that that's gone, let's think a little bit about what it's doing. The bit is pathing between the exterior perimeter of the Jane lettering and the interior perimeter of this bounding box. But really, anywhere not near the letters can be done with the quarter inch NML. I'm going to switch over to the design tab. Now, some people might do offset lettering here or try to get like a tight shape around Jane. You're probably going to spend more time getting that right than doing it this way, especially for a simple project. I'm just going to draw a box that fits around the Jane lettering. And that's it. So let's go back to the toolpathing tab and I'm going to edit the existing Jane toolpath. And instead of pocketing between the lettering and this outer perimeter, I'm just going to unselect this using control and select the new box I created. Great. Now I'm going to select the box in the exterior, create a new contour toolpath, choose pocket, edit this to use a quarter inch end mill. In this case, I'm just going to accept the default feeds and speeds because it's already running about 50% faster than my eighth inch end mill and the depth per pass is already enough to get that Jane lettering in one go. 
Putting these next to each other, you can see the clear and distinct difference between the two. In addition to moving 50% faster, the bit is twice as wide, and it can take far fewer passes to clear that area out. I'll take a moment now to restore the tool pathing for Smith and create a similar box around Smith. Okay, now that that's done, I've disabled everything except for the clearing around Jane. Let's take a look at how this is going to cut. First, it's going to use the quarter inch end mill to clear around where the letters for Jane would be, leaving a relatively small area that we'll have to clear with the eighth inch bit. It will then use that same quarter inch end mill to clear the area around Smith. I've grouped these together so that you only have to change the bit once. It makes both of the passes with the quarter inch bit, then you change your bit, then it makes both of the cuts with the eighth inch end mill. After changing your bit, it then comes back and only has to clear out the area around Jane, not all the way to the edge with the small eighth inch end mill. Finally, the eighth inch end mill is used to clear out the letters for Smith. One final time, I'll go ahead and save the G code and see what kind of change we get. It looks like our efforts paid off as our final simulation has this coming in at under two hours. Once again, I do not think that these estimates are accurate. I did not have to put in much information about the machine in order to get this estimate, but it has shown that we've dropped its estimation from two and a half days to under two hours. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope you've taken away at least one technique that you can use to speed up your cutting. If you found the video useful, I'd really appreciate if you could give it a thumbs up, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you have techniques that you think would speed up this project, let me know, and I might do another video.